Hello everybody, it's Dr. Weber from PED 589. I'm just going to go over the schedule and syllabus quickly before we head into Module 5. I just want you to notice that in Module 5 there was a lesson planning assignment and um, I looked at the syllabus and I didn't actually see it in the course requirements so I have added it in there and I've taken one 5% out of an article chapter reflection. So before you had four articles here that were due, I've taken one of those out in place of this lesson plan assignment. So those would be the only changes I've made um, since uh, adapting this course. Okay. So if we go to modules, you should be working uh, through module four right now. And you'll be going into module five right now with me. So. I am going to kind of go over each of these um, lesson plan assignments and rubrics for you before we get started. Uh, you're going to see a EdTPA lesson plan template. These are the lesson plan templates that uh, we utilize in North Carolina and I'm going to go over some of the materials within this template. Okay, So you'll be creating a lesson plan using this template. Uh, and I'll be showing you some rubrics and some sample lesson plans. So if we go to the rubric, it'll have a guide for each portion of the lesson plan that is in depth. And I'll give you a guide on what your expectations are for each part of that assignment. So clicking out here at the EdTPA lesson plan rubric, Okay, and although it's worth only 5%, this will give you a rubric on what your evaluators will be looking at during your EdTPA portion of your internship if you get there. So as far as your essential standards, making sure that you're stating the appropriate standards and clarifying objectives, uh, questions clearly identify what students will learn in the lesson, write a measurable objective. Materials, list all the materials and provide clear timeline for a lesson. Key vocabulary, complete list of new vocabulary words introduced. Assessment, appropriate tools and strategies used. Learning engagement, explains clearly what you plan to do in the lesson. And mini lesson, complete explanation of what the teacher will do in measurable student ob object. Closing, summary of lesson with review of vocabulary important points and accommodations, plan and provide materials or strategies to meet needs of all students. Okay, So those would be some of the rubric uh, criteria for the lesson plan. You're going to see some example lesson plans that are exemplary in Module 5 and you're going to check out this one first. Okay, and you'll see that this was a archery unit the date, the teacher's name, the essential standard that was found on the site that was provided a couple modules ago, and the clarifying objectives. Uh, central focus, the purpose of this plan is for students to be introduced to the game of archery golf. Students will use skills learned throughout the archery unit to participate in a su successful game of archery golf. Students will experiment with different shot techniques to generate an acceptable score for each target. Materials, archery equipment that includes bows, arrows, quivers, and cones, clipboard with score sheet and pen pencil, agenda, 5 to 8 minute warm up, 8 to 13 minute shot practice, 13 to 33 minute archery golf gameplay, and 33 to 38 minute closure. So, as far as your uh, agenda goes, you should be creating a 45 minute to 60 minute lesson plan. Uh, depending on you know, obviously the school district you're at. Sometimes it's you know 45 minutes, sometimes it's an hour and a half, but for the purpose of this lesson plan, you can do a 45 minute or 60 minute lesson plan. Academic language, identify one language function essential for student learning within your central focus. Uh, they're looking at evaluation and sequencing, so they're evaluating using the score sheet and pen, pencil, pen and pencil, and the sequencing is the warm-up, the shot practice, and then the gameplay. So they're using those two um, portions of academic language. So you're going to identify one or two that you're going to be using. And then additional language demands or language supports. 
include other language demands students need to understand and participate successfully in learning target. So vocabulary function syntax discourse. They're going to look at they're going to evaluate shots by comparing outcomes of peers and previous shots to determine next shot. Okay, syntax and discourse demonstrates proper archery shot skill sequence for each shot. Students will use proper vocabulary when discussing the game, arrow, quiver, target, and bow. Okay, so those would be the additional language demands and language supports utilized in archery. Okay, arrow, quiver, target, and bow. Also, syntax and discourse, how the skill sequence will be going through. It looks like demonstrating proper archery shot skill sequence for each shot and also evaluating shots by comparing outcomes of peers and previous shots to determine the next shot, okay? So that's how they play the game, and that's how they would use additional language demands and language supports uh, when teaching archery. As far as the assessment, the assessment, students will be assessing the game of archery through scores and technique. So you already saw the assessments listed in the materials. Students will be asked to participate in a game of archery golf where they must execute successful archery shots, locate their arrows, and experiment with different distances. Students will keep track of their own score and teachers will score students on a scorecard. On the scorecard, students will be also assessed on technique. So it looks like the teacher is going to be looking at technique and the student is going to be looking at how many points they get. As far as a mini lesson, discuss the game of archery golf as it relates to previous learned archery shots. So that's going to basically be the, the lesson that the teacher is going to be conducting that day. The guided practice, the teacher will explain the rules of golf and answer student questions, review the proper, proper archery stance for a successful shot, and the teacher will allow student practice on the first shot so that students can experiment with different archery shots distances. So that would be when the teacher is guiding students. And then independent practice, participate in the golf or the uh, arrow archery game of golf. So that would be the independent practice. So what are the students going to be doing on their own? Learning target, psychomotor, that is the physical domain looking at physical performance. Students will shoot an arrow towards the intended target each round, use proper form when shooting, make an arrow to the target each round. Cognitive, that's what they're able to remember or understand, determine the shot they need based on distance of target and wind. So looking at different uh, strategies to shoot using your mind. Use skills learned previously to make arrows into the targets. So remembering past mistakes or past trials. And students will affective. This is their social aspect of how they're going to be able to cooperate with each other. Pay attention to their peers. Shots in order to determine their next shot. So that will be really important for safety. Challenge themselves to beat their previous round score. So more of a self-determining factor here and then discuss the game after it is played as related to their likes and dislikes. So as a class discussing that, uh, you know, archery golf and its implications on health and also um, how they did, what they liked about it. Closing, how will you close the class? Students will participate in a group discussion. After the game has been played, students will reflect on the game and their personal experience and thoughts about the game. This will assess students in cognitive domain as well as help me develop change within the lesson. So a little bit of reflection for the teacher as well. Accommodations or modifications. No accommodation or modifications are needed. I know students with specific needs in this class. So this would be specific to your class. You could add in, even if there wasn't students with disabilities or accommodation features, you could still add in how you could feature accommodation. So I might ask this uh, student here too, well, I mean, what could you do to modify or adapt the game? Planning for instruction, okay? The purpose of the plan, the instructional plan. The purpose of this instructional plan is to build upon students' current knowledge of archery and put it into gameplay. Students have learned archery for seven weeks and they will be able to put their previous knowledge into action with the game. Students will learn the rules, scoring, and expectations for the game throughout this plan, okay? So going over the introduction of the, the uh, plan and the purpose. The lesson will start with students walking to the football field as a warm up. Once students are at the field, they will begin explaining archery golf, explain the rules, set up gameplay and scoring for the game. Students will be the, divided into two teams or groups. One will, one that I will take to play and one that Mrs. Letia will take to play. So talking about how they're gonna be actually sharing classes. But for you in this lesson plan, just focus on you yourself teaching it. 
Student will be divided for safety and time reasons. There will be seven to eight students per group. Students will be able to complete practice round per their choice. We will begin the gameplay once students are in position to play safely. Okay. Gameplay will look like students one shoots arrow from starting point toward target. Now they're going. Uh, now they're talking about the instructional plan and how they're going to carry out the gameplay. And then, as far as their assessment goes, they're looking at prior learning, formal and informal. So students have background knowledge of archery by participating in archery class for the last seven weeks, so that would be the prerequisites to what they're about to learn. And students have learned proper shot form, how to score their shots based on a target. We will have a discussion about properly proper archery form where students will be able to say as well as demonstrate a proper archery shot. Pre-assessments in the form of skills and test archery scorecard. Students count their archery scores each day and report the scores as a form of daily assessment. Because scores show accuracy, students aim to improve scores each day. So the assessment is the scorecard, and hopefully we'll be able to see that at the end of this lesson plan. Plan for students' learning needs. No student in this case has specific learning needs, but if you had a student in your class, you may be writing uh, some additional needs for specific students. If there are students having difficulty making the arrow to throw to the target each round, the distance may be modified. I like that, depending on how many students are struggling, where they are struggling. So you could also add this to this section here. You can um, shorten the distance you could put uh, for archery, right? As far as assessment goes, student will be able to, that's what the SWBAT means. Okay, content objectives, evaluate shots of peers and previous shots and experiment with different techniques for shooting arrows. Use proper nine step sequence to perform a proper archery shot. Demonstrate knowledge of archery techniques in, by performing proper archery form during all rounds of play. Assessment strategies. Students will play a game of archery golf where they will be scored based on number of shots as well as technique. Students will maintain proper archery form each shot while keeping track of scores, and students will observe peers and focus on their own shots. That would be the assessment strategies. Other content objectives reflect on their experience playing archery golf in a class discussion. Students will participate in a short discussion with a teacher and their peers. So those would be the strategies for assessing and also the content objectives. Student voice. So this you would list in criteria, um, you would list in words that the students in the previous lessons have talked about. Obviously they didn't write anything here, but if you were teaching a, a lesson plan, you might put in, you know, exhilarating or super fun or um, harder than I thought or you know using words that the students might say so next time you create a lesson plan for example if you're creating the follow-up lesson plan you probably have some more student voice here K through 12 students will be able to one successfully land arrows into a target each round based artifacts scorecard based artifacts are shots taken and skill technique and how will students reflect on their learning? Students will reflect on their learning with a discussion at the end of the game. So we've already talked about that. Analyze how to make the proper shot in order to make an accurate shot. This would be self-assessment as well as peer assessment in the form of observation. Students will reflect on their learning after every shot. They will also watch their peer shots and then perform a shot based on what they have observed. So this is how students will reflect on their learning. Arrangement of students for instruction. For the instruction, it will be the entire class group as a whole. Students will be placed in two groups of seven to eight people for the game for safety measure and time management. At the end, groups will come together as a whole class to discuss the game. So talking about the arrangement of students. Instruction and engaging students for learning. Introduction, students will enter the gym and get changed if needed. So you will talk about how the students will be introduced to this lesson. Attendance will be taken and students will head outside as soon as possible. Archery equipment will be set up and ready to go, and students will form a line or a group around the archery equipment for explanation. I will explain archery, golf, and everything related to the game. Students will be placed in groups for gameplay. So that's how you would introduce and engage your students for learning. Learning activities, the learning sequence steps and activities. So you're going to have, um, you're going to write your introduction, your guided practice, and your independent practice. Um, you can see how you wrote that in here. You'll get some of that information from here, and you'll also get some of this information already from your learning engagement. So it is pretty repetitive. You'll be writing a lot of the same things twice. A TPA lesson plan is really thorough for new teachers, 
and that's just to make sure that you know exactly what you're teaching okay so don't get intimidated by this just try to work through it and if you don't think you can fill this up as thoroughly as these past students um, don't worry about it so much as just try to um, teach a lesson that you want to teach that you think is very important okay so now we're going to go into learning activities introduction warm up five to eight minutes remember that should also align with up here when you look at the agenda okay and we go back down we see the learning sequence warm up five to eight minutes i will generate group discussion about archery shots and how they relate to archery golf i'll explain the rules of archery golf how it is played and how it is scored i will show students the boundaries of the field and the targets that were created for the game students will be able to ask questions for clarification i might even add in some mobility for the hands the wrists the elbows the shoulders there that's just me so supporting student learning principles and theories. So basically the principles and theories that you've been taught, like Blooms, Vygotsky, Bandura, Piaget, those are all theories on how to engage or help students learn new information, why I did what I did. So the importance of language. Students will be able to discuss what they know in terms of shooting arrows and properly archery form. So um, students will be asked to recite the steps to proper archery shot. This will prepare students for gameplay. So talking about why I did what I did. So that's why they're talking about it as a discussion. And maybe that's not why they started with mobility. And so it's up to the teacher to, to decide. Guided practice. Students will be split up into two teams of seven to eight. I will take group of seven to eight while Miss Lancia takes the other group. The group will have, I have that. Oh, sorry, the group that I have will be playing archery golf on the football field. Students will be able to discuss a shot with the peers before shooting. Observational learning, they will be able to observe their peers as well as themselves every round so that for the next rounds they know what they should do. So you can use Bukowski's um, Importance of Language or Bandura obs Observational Learning or Piaget Scheme, Schemes and Schemas if you would like. Um, or some of the other theories and principles from the other samples if you need to if you don't if you've never heard of these theories before you can reuse these but as long as it's in the context of your game or sport okay so independent practice students will begin playing rounds archer golf following the rules maintain safety i'll keep score on the scorecard with students keeping track of their score for each round in their head so schemes and schemas students will use prior knowledge and experience to perform in the game of archery golf they will use round one practice to participate successfully in the next few rounds. So using prior knowledge and experience to perform in the game of archery golf. PSA scheme can be used for almost any sport or game. So if you were to teach volleyball, you might say um, they use prior knowledge using a um, beach volleyball and they experienced it before actually playing the game. Closure after 15 to 20 minutes have passed, depending on how much time we have, it will bring students for a short discussion. Discuss in this discussion, we talk about topics related to the game, such as likes and dislikes, what was easy, what was hard, scores and technique, observations, student concerns, student suggestions. This falls under Bloom's taxonomy of thinking because students will be asked to reflect on their experience playing archery golf. Students will be evaluating their gameplay and their game in general. Independent practice, practicing archery outside of school if possible, applies to students who have their own archery equipment and instructional material resources and technology. It doesn't seem like any was used for this specific assessment or lesson plan. Now, when it comes to assessment, you can see that this was the pre-assessment uh, checklist. Okay, how to stand, how to load, where the hand should go, how to set the bow, how to draw the arrow, and how to anchor, and how to release and follow through first shot, second shot, third shot, okay, pre-assessment daily archery scorecard, here's a scorecard that they were talking about, lesson assessment, archery golf score, skill card, name, arrow color, hole one, hole two, skill technique, and notes, so this could be peer observation, or it could also be teacher observation, so it looks like the teacher was able to obviously observe, give feedback, and then also the students were able to give themselves pre-assessments and also go through a whole golf, golf scorecard skill card okay so this would be an example lesson plan for archery golf and you can use and uh, you can just basically look at how they taught this lesson and try to pick a different sport or game or activity to teach and that's that that'll be up to you for this assignment so you're going to be able to choose 
um, whatever sport or physical activity that you'd like to teach okay now as far as going to websites I definitely recommend pecentral.com or pecentral.org okay, if you don't have a secondary PE or an elementary PE book uh, as far as creating lesson plans I would get your general ideas from pecentral.org okay so um, again if you don't have a book I, I would definitely look at pecentral.org okay if you have books on sports and training and you've done this before then just use those books that you have you're gonna see I have um, another uh, lesson plan here and another lesson plan on health so you can choose either health or physical education and you really have any a ton of topics to choose from just check out the standards and make sure that your lesson plan also has an assessment attached to it so that would be for module 5 Okay, so those would be the pending directions. All right, now for module six, you have some readings and uh, reviews that you'll be writing. So you'll be reading chapter and introduction to assessment. Um, if you'd like to look at these uh, articles before getting into module five to help you if you've never created an assessment before, you can do that. This is just gonna go th more thoroughly directly into assessment. Assessment is basically being able to measure the student's performance and how are you going to be able to measure student's performance, hopefully by creating skill cards, scorecards, or other sorts of means. So if you go to pecentral.com and you go to assessments, they're going to have lots of assessments for you here. Okay, so just type it in. Lots of different assessments. You can go to hockey assessment, pathway assessment, and they're going to give you documents here. Okay, so make sure that your lesson plan has an assessment attached. Okay, so that would be an example of how to find an assessment. So I definitely like using pecentral.org to find uh, lesson plans. And then you can also uh, do your own research as far as what you'd like to teach as well. I'll add that in this link here in module five. I'll put in pecentral.org as a, as a link. And then I'll also put a resource folder um, that I like to use. Alright, so I've added pecentral.org and I've also added Dr. Weber's resource folder. So it should just take you to pecentral.org. If it doesn't, just click on that top button and it should send you there, okay? As far as the PE uh, folder that I've created called uh, Dr. Weber's resource folder, if you click on that here, it will take you to a Google Docs page and it will provide you with lots of different links. Um, so I have curriculum assessment and instruction folder where it gives you tons of assessments. Uh, it gives you lots of different uh, guides as far as Cognitive Bloom's domain of learning. So again, strategies on how to plan. Also, if you scroll down, you'll see elementary age games. If you want to do an elementary aged uh, physical education plan, we have pictures and assessment charts for physical activity, 200 yoga pictures, three, you know, lots of different stuff, sport education pictures of the skills, progression charts with visuals. We've got stuff for hockey, basketball, you name it here. So you'll be able to use this resource folder as well. Okay, dance education, nutrition, and also swimming. So that will be at your disposal for module five. For module six, or sorry, yep, for module six, for module five. All right, so for module six, again, you'll just have, you'll read this chapter and this article, then you'll create a reading reflection on maximizing learning through assessment. You'll read this chapter, read this article, and then create a reading reflection on grading and report cards for standard-based physical education. And then you'll read this article and create this reflection on this article called Assessment of Effort and Participation in Physical Education. So that's gonna get you all um, caught up and uh, informed about assessment and grading in physical education. Module seven, we'll get into rubrics assignment creating a psychomotor domain but right now just just worry about modules five and six if you have any questions please reach out 
I understand that um, some of this material Dr. Elliot goes over, but I'm going to do my best at trying to uh, give you as much information as I can to help you be successful. So reach out if you have any questions, and I appreciate everybody. Thanks a lot.